If you think you don't need estate planning, I'm gonna share with you why you do. Hey everybody, I'm Zach the Money Nutritionist, and it's my job to provide you with healthy money tips. And that's either going to be in the form of personal finances or real estate. I'm able to give advice here because I used to be an investment advisor and I actively invest into real estate. Today I wanna to talk to you about an uncomfortable topic and that is estate planning. Because what happens when you die or become incapacitated? No one wants to think about it. I don't wanna think about it. But you have to plan and you especially need to plan for your family. But today I wanna to talk about what planning would you do if you're single and not married? If you're married, estate planning is actually easier because your spouse is going to get control because you have joint accounts. And then it's a lot easier under some laws for your spouse to take control of other assets. So it's more cut and dry. But if you're not married, who gets what? It's not as clear. So this means if you're not married, it almost becomes more important, especially if you have a lot of assets or accounts. At the very least, there are two things you should do if you're single. And the one is that you need a durable power of attorney. This just designates who's doing your finances once you get into a position where you can't do it. And secondly, you need a healthcare power of attorney. And that's, you know, if you're in a hospital and you can't make a decision, who's making the call when it comes to healthcare? Now both of these documents are inexpensive and if you don't want to fill them out what you can do is set up a revocable trust. Now this is a living trust and if you don't know the difference between irrevocable and revocable trusts, I have a link down below to a trust fund video that I did and you can catch up really quickly because the minute of nutrition videos are only, well, a minute. But by setting up a trust you can name a trustee and that's who will make the calls for you. So one of the most important things when it comes to setting up an estate plan if you're single is let's assume you've got kids because just because you're single doesn't mean you don't have kids. This is probably the most important piece of this if you do have children. So let's assume you have a kid or multiple children and you have property. So when you pass, you could say, hey, just send the property to the child. But if your kid is a minor, then that property is going to have judicial oversight that has some restrictions. So it's not as helpful to have property going directly to your children if they are a minor. The better alternative that you would want to do is put that property into a trust and then you could state that the minor doesn't have the ability to have access to that trust until they become of age, which would be 18. And then you're able to let whoever has oversight over that trust to pretty much look over that property and the funds until your kid reaches 18. The reason you do this is because you don't want a minor just having tons of money. You want someone to have some oversight over the funds so that the minor just doesn't spend everything. And the same goes for life insurance. If you're leaving life insurance to a child who's a minor, you want to pay that life insurance into the trust, not directly to your kid. And also when it comes to kids, you wanna make sure that you designate who is going to be the guardian of your kids when you do pass or if something happens. Behind children, the next most important thing for someone who's not married and single and you know needs an estate plan would be business. So if you have a business, what you need to do in terms of an estate plan is you need to pick an executor or a trustee who will have authority over my business in the end. So this person has the ability to sell your business or continue it when you pass. Because when you pass, most likely that business is going to start plummeting in value because you're no longer here to run it. And it just loses um, a lot of the goodwill that it had. You also wanna do this so that that person has the ability to sell the business so the money can then pass down to your beneficiaries. So make sure if you have a business that you designate who those people are going to be that have the ability to execute on your behalf. I hate to put this next on the list, but parents would come after the business if you have elderly parents when you pass. Because if you're trying to take care of them financially, then what you have to do is set up a trust so that someone could be over that trust and give money to elderly parents as it's advisable. Because you don't wanna just hand elderly people a ton of money. I know that sounds terrible, but as you get older, you know, things happen. So you wanna make sure that it's in a trust that it's taking care of your parents. And so that would probably be my advice when it does come to taking care of parents if you do pass. So after you're able to set up your parents and you've set up your kids and you've also set who's getting the business responsibility when you pass, the next thing you would wanna do, if this is important to you, is define your charitable contributions. 
So instead of just playing out and giving a gift, what you can do is set up a foundation or a fund that upon you passing a certain amount starts either this foundation or fund, and then you can put a financial advisor or someone specific in charge of those funds to take care of that foundation. So even though you're not here anymore, that just continues to help people around the world. So that's an option if you want to do charity. So yes, charity plays a part in your estate planning if that's something you wanna do. And again, this isn't overly exciting stuff. You're like, oh, I'm sitting here trying to plan my death or if I'm incapacitated and brain dead. And it sounds terrible, but you have to think here. You work your whole entire life to make money, to acquire assets, to take care of your family. Even if you're single, you're still taking care of either yourself or someone else. So you need to define how that wealth and how those assets will continue to live on even in your absence. So with that said, if you don't define an estate plan, what's going to happen is everything's going to go through probate, which is expensive and it goes through the state and it's costly. Whereas you can pay for the, the proper estate planning and then you can skip probate. And the way to do that is to have like a revocable trust, which means the state can't put it through probate because you've already defined those assets into a trust and the trustee has control over those assets. And alternatively, if you don't even do that, at your passing, you can make your assets or funds or whatever that might be payable to the trust at your passing. So you can define all of these things. That way it skips probate. It doesn't get tied up or even contested in the courts if it goes through probate. You just put it in a trust. And that's the easiest method when it does come to estate planning. And this next one's a bit of a no-brainer, but something you need to do is be organized with your documents. Because yeah, you could go tell your lawyer, hey, I've got a will, I've got my trust, uh, and here, this is how you should take care of everything when I'm gone. They're probably not gonna know when you're incapacitated, and they're probably not gonna know when you pass. So you need to tell family members and people important to you where those documents are. So all of your fiduciaries and people that have the power of attorneys, they need to know where your files are, they need to know where your documents are. How do they even access everything? What's your passwords? So you need to stay organized and be very clear with, hey, here's where everything's at, here's how you access everything, and here's how you execute it. So just stay organized with your documents and tell the important people where your stuff's at. But these are the steps that are usually missed by people who are not married. The other thing you wanna do is make sure it stays up to date. So every few years you wanna check it just to make sure everything's defined because every few years you've probably grabbed a ton more property, you may have new accounts, and who knows what else can happen over a few years. You just wanna make sure it's up to date. All in all, the most important thing is that you have a plan and so your children or your parents or your family members and whoever that might be knows exactly how your assets can be used to your wishes when the time comes. And hopefully it's not until you're old, but we can't plan, we, we never know when that time's going to come. So my best advice to you is go ahead and start focusing on an estate plan, whether you're married or not.